In this video we'll take a look at the shift lever, grips, tank, and seat, more than likely. We're going to start out with the shifter. This old shifter, there's certainly nothing wrong with it. It's just ugly and ratty looking. So we're going to replace it. And we'll keep this as a spare. And most of the parts we are replacing on this, we are just keeping. Except for maybe the headlights and whatnot, we'll put those on eBay. Go ahead and take the screw all the way out. And then you can just slide the old shifter off. Sometimes easier said than done. We're going to replace it with this IMS unit here. Now, this is the only thing I could find that was made to fit this particular your XR250R or any of them. I wanted to get a red one just to kind of complement some of the other red items, but uh, I thought this was black, but instead we're going with gray. That's about where it was. We can adjust this later on. Go ahead, screw it down, tighten it up. That's all there is to replacing a shifter. Now, moving on to the grips, these are actually a decent set of Scott grips. The only problem is they don't match. This side has a half waffle, the other side has a full waffle. It feels kind of odd. I prefer the half waffle, and that's why we've got a new set of half waffle grips. We're going to cut these old ones off and reinstall the new. Remove the old grips just using a razor blade. There's really no sense in trying to save them. You can get them off, but it's really not worth it when you can do it in two seconds. And we'll go ahead and clean off any residue here. A great way to get the old residue off, if goof off doesn't work, is use the razor blade you use to cut off the grip. Just using the straight edge and just scraping it. We're not cutting. And that'll get most of your residue off. Now we're going to go ahead and put the new grip on. I like to use hairspray. You can use grip glue. You can use a variety of different ways to put these on. Spray the inside of the grip. And then we'll just slide it into place. Now if you're using like a half waffle, make sure that it's in a comfortable position where you want it. And if it's not drying fast enough on the end here, which it may not, go ahead and poke a little hole in the end and that'll allow the end to dry. Went on to the other side. Now you can, you want to save these. You could use compressed air, but this one has got all kinds of holes in it. There's no reason to save it. We're going to use the same process. Spray some hairspray in there. Slide the grip on. Now I've temporarily mounted the tank. We have the complete underside of it clean. It was a mess. Now it's time to take off these old graphics. Yeah. We'll clean this up. We'll get all this residue off. Give it a good cleaning. Then we'll be ready to apply our new graphics. Once we peeled the old graphic off, we got some degreaser, cleaned it, we cleaned it with some goof off, and then last but not least, some alcohol. And now we've applied the new graphic. I'm really digging this new graphic. I think it gives it a new, fresh look. Included with that graphics kit, there was also a airbox graphic. And here is the other side. Next thing to do, while we're still awaiting some parts, recover that seat. Now the first thing in recovering the seat is removing the old cover. Now some guys will just recover over the current seat. I'm not going to do that. So we need to go around and remove all these staples. You can use a screwdriver, but I'm going to use this little arrow tool, which I use for other woodworking projects. Here's how it works. Really, really easy. You put it in the slot and simply pull out the staple. You could also use a staple puller that you would find in like a classroom. That will work, but this right here seems to be the best. We'll go ahead and get all these staples out and then we will clean the seat and we'll start reinstalling that cover. Now that we've got the base of the seat all cleaned up, we'll go ahead and reinstall our foam. We're just going to set it in place and then we can fit the new cover. Now this is a factory effects seat cover and so far I'm liking the way it fits. It actually has a shape to it. Once you have the cover in place, you can go ahead and start stapling. Now I'm using an Aero pneumatic stapler but you could certainly use a hand stapler. Keep in mind with the hand stapler, it can be more difficult because the staples will not go all the way through and they'll bend and that kind of thing. So we're gonna use this pneumatic one. We're gonna start one staple right here at the top. 
There's our one staple. Pull the back over and put another one. Now this will be more temporary because we'll come back and probably have to remove that to stretch it out. Being like in and down. So we're going to we're going to start at the top and just work our way around. Got it all trimmed out. Now I do have one slight crinkle here. There's not a whole lot I can really do about it. But overall it looks pretty good. It was cheap as far as the price, so we're gonna roll with it. Now we're gonna see what it looks like on the bike. You're gonna get a sneak peek of the finished product. Here's an overall look at the bike. I think it looks really good. I'm not 100% happy with the seat. The main reason is the seat foam is a little degraded at the top, so we will show you what I'm talking about. You got a little bit of crinkling right here. You can see where it's uneven, and that's not the cover itself. That's the seat foam just giving way. It's just a little, broken down so I may order new seat foam in the future but for now we're just going to leave it as is. And here's another angle. Of course we are still waiting on the tail light and the last angle. 